Hi there, I'm Christian and you're watching A Dev Story. Today we're getting into the last video of the type of technical interview series. In this video, I'm going to cover some type of interviews that I haven't experienced myself, neither as a candidate or as an interviewer, and also I'm going to give you additional tips. Without further ado, let's start. I've been looking on the internet for different type of technical interviews and I've also found these two interviews that I'm going to mention today. One of these types of interviews is reviewing existing code. Basically, as an interviewer, you give a piece of code to the candidate and they will need to review it and give you some feedback. In this case, I'm not sure how valuable it would be because you can get some insights into the code or how the candidate think or what is important for the candidate in terms of code, but I wouldn't consider it as a full interview. Just maybe it could be a part or a question during the interview. The reason is because usually when you're going through a code review, the hardest part of it is to know what's missing, not what is in there, right? Like you can see, oh, maybe you could have used, I don't know, in Java streams instead of a for loop, for example. But it's actually more important during a code review to know what's missing outside of it, right? Like what's missing in the domain, if someone else did this, if there's a library that can do this for you instead of you doing by yourself. So I'm not sure about what would be the goal of this type of interview or how successful it is or how effective it is. Another type of interview or questions that I have seen on the internet is the conceptual problem solving type of questions. These are the type of questions that are like, how many US quarters are needed to get into the height of the Empire State or how many golf balls fit into an airplane. I see the motivation for these type of questions. I'm not sure if how effective they are, but I know that the motivation could be something like knowing how a complex problem is handled by the candidate. How do they organize the solution of it? I don't know, I haven't experienced it myself, so I don't know how effective it would be. But if you have experienced it, I would like to know from you, so let me know in the comment section. Now let's get a summary of all the tips that I've given before, and also I'm going to emphasize on some new ones that I didn't mention before. As an interviewer, be aware of the legal requirements that you are bound to. There could be certain questions that you cannot ask, certain things that you cannot say, and certain things, internal things of the company that you cannot share. So be aware of those and be careful during the interview. Also, as I've mentioned throughout all the series, is to care about the candidate experience. It's very important for different reasons. One of them, for example, is company brand. Even if a candidate was rejected from the company, they can still speak good of the company and can attract more talent. Also, an unprepared candidate doesn't mean that it's a bad professional. They might prepare better next time and succeed on the interview and then you will have a great colleague to work with. Also, as I've mentioned throughout the whole series, decide well your questions so they are easy to understand, they have different solutions and you can get meaningful information from the candidate. For the candidate, the more you know, the better. If you can know more about the company, how is the interview process, even maybe what type of questions there are, the better because you will be better prepared. You can get this information, for example, from sites like Glassdoor. Also, if you're focusing on larger tech companies, make sure to polish the computer science fundamental topics. You can get this information from books like Cracking the Coding Interview, of course, computer science books, and you can get it from my guides or watching my videos, and there are even companies that send you the material to prepare for the technical interviews. Finally, don't forget to be very vocal during the interviews. Like, I'm not mean speaking too much, but I mean more about when you're thinking, try to express out loud what you're thinking. This means that when you get asked a question that you don't know the answer and you're thinking through it, try to speak out loud so the interviewer get more information about what is your thought process. So that's it. That's the official end of the type of technical interview series. Of course, there is more than technical questions during the interview process. There is also the values and behavioral interview, and I will make a video about it later. So if you haven't, subscribe to my channel and keep an eye for it. But before I go, I wanted to ask you, what do you think about the different type of technical interviews? Do you think one provides more value than others? Do you have any additional tips? Let me know in the comment sections below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye.